currently be the best, but the Ipswich Town boss, Roy Keane, is certainly the wealthiest club manager in the country. The new Football Rich list published today reveals he's amassed a fortune of £27 million. Pounds. Now, that's £5 million more than his old mentor, Sir Alex Ferguson, who's ranked just third in the list. Well, the only manager worth more than Keane is actually Fabio Capella, the current England boss as well. I'll give you a clue about how many do you think that he might be involved. It's uh, worth £30 million. Pounds. And Norwich City have moved a step closer to Wembley with a Cody McDonald goal at Gillingham last night. Right, tonight, if you tune in to ITV1 at 8 o'clock, you'll see a host of celebrities converge on the red carpet for one of the most glittering award ceremonies of the year. But no matter how famous they are, they won't be the stars of the show because tonight is the Pride of Britain Awards, held to honour ordinary people who have done extraordinary things. And that includes some rather special people from this region. And Lorna Ramsey joins us now from the home of one of those winners. Uh, go on there, Lorna, where are you? Well, this alleyway in Halstead is a long way from the red carpets in London, but a 12-year-old boy who lives in this house has a rather remarkable story to tell after he spent a night out with the stars in London. Back to Essex and back down to Earth. This afternoon, Jake Peach and his family arrived at Kelvedon Railway Station after a night to remember at the Pride of Britain Awards in London. And what a night it was. Jake was sure to get some mementos to remember it by. From Simon Cowell to Mylene Class, Jake's been pictured with them all. It was very amazing, phenomenal at the Grosvenor's house in Mayfair. Um, very bosh, and it was just an amazing night. Um, one to remember, definitely, and we met some great people. Jake received the Child of Courage Award. He's helped to raise £600,000 for Great Ormond Street Hospital. I'd just like to say thank you to everyone at the charity uh, who work phenomenally hard every year, raising money at every single event. And I'd just like to say thank you to my family who have supported me all the way with whatever I do. And they're just the best. <laughs> He was diagnosed with leukaemia last year, and at his worst, he was in a medically induced coma. Later, he made this video diary to help others. Very tired today. Exhausted. His mother Karen says the awards night gave Jake the boost he deserves. After everything he's gone through, this is just sort of, um, sort of some good's come out of the bad as such. Um, it's just nice that he's got this opportunity to sort of celebrate what he's done and what other people do as well and be a part of the whole Pride of Britain Awards itself. So it's, it's really good. And as if the awards ceremony wasn't enough, the winners were also guests of honour at number 10. And that included Warner Duff from Ipswich, our regional finalist in this year's Feel Good Factor category. Amazing, absolutely amazing. The amazing people that came up on stage to, to receive their awards, courageous, um, inspiring. It, it was just unbelievable. Uh, to, you know, to be in that company was, was just unreal, unreal, brilliant. Other winners from our region include Kirsten Helenga, who's 23 and from Daventry. Kirsten has advanced breast cancer, which has spread to her spine. She devotes herself to raising cancer awareness with her campaign, Copper Feel. When you see Jake at his home in Halstead, it's hard to believe he was so ill just a year ago. But now one recovery, a host of celebrities, and £600,000 later, his one wish? To raise even more money for Great Ormond Street Hospital. Well, Jake certainly has friends in high places to help him reach that target. Now, Jake, I understand you're an Arsenal supporter and you've got a bit of a bet going with the Chelsea footballer Frank Lampard. Yep. On the 29th of November, um, Arsenal and Chelsea are playing at the Emirates Stadium and if Arsenal win, he'll make a donation. And if Arsenal lose, then I have to dress up in a Chelsea kit and have a photo done and we shook on it. 
Oh, well, best of luck with that. And, and what were the highlights for you of the night? Um, the, uh, the beginning when it started, it was all jazzy and cool. Um, when I got my award, that was obviously great. And the, when we met everybody at the after show party. Brilliant. And, and you've raised £600,000 for Great Ormond Street. What, what does the charity mean to you? Uh, the charity means a lot to me because it just the hospital's great and I feel like just fundraising for the hospital so much. I, so in, I, love, I love it so much. Well, congratulations on your award. Well, let's speak to Jake's mum, Karen. Karen, what was it like seeing Jake receive that award? It's fantastic seeing Jake up on stage to receive the award. So he's got some recognition for the, the work that he's done for the charity. Um, it's just fantastic, overwhelming. And do you think he'll ever let you forget, you know, all those stars that he met on that night? Somehow, I don't think so. Um, <laughs> it'll definitely be talked about for quite a while, I would imagine, as Jake's quite chatty. Absolutely. Well, congratulations to you all. And, um, of course, don't forget that the Pride of Britain Awards are on tonight at 8 o'clock here on ITV1. We'll be glued to it. Thanks very much, Lorna. I have to say, as a, an Arsenal supporter, I think if Jake actually has to go through with that wearing of the Chelsea shirt, I think Frank Lampard perhaps should give even yeah. more money to the charity. Knowing big Frank as we do, I'm sure I'm that he'll sure actually he'll get give a donation the cash. Anyway. Anyway. It is extraordinary, isn't it? Because I mean, you hear the word inspiration used so often today, don't you? But actually, if that's one Never person that it should so be referred to completely, £600,000, he's going to get that million. You just know he is. Quite brilliant stuff. And I believe you've actually... Who did you have a text from today? Uh, uh, Warner Duff, who we saw there briefly, yeah. the uh, Feel Good Factor finalist from this part of the world. I remember, yeah. he set up a disabled uh, football team in Ipswich and uh, he went along as a finalist and said uh, just what an incredible evening he'd had and uh, he's very very modest like all our winners in this mm. part of the world but I uh, just said it was an absolutely phenomenal, e a phenomenal evening. Yeah even. it's gonna be a terrific evening tonight night to be one at eight o'clock make sure you're watching that. Now here's a question for mm -hmm. you. Uh, okay, are you a dog one. or a cat person? We had a little chat about this before the programme started actually and I think generally the general consensus was I think we're more doggy people in the are. office actually aren't we but nothing against cats of course. Do you fancy being a pig person? I'm not I sure kid you not pig about pig. this, yeah. you can actually be a pig person. Yeah, my sister thought she had a pig of a brother, but that's a different story. Now, Jane Croft from Christchurch near Wisbeach breeds what are known as micro pigs. They only grow to just over a foot in height. But whilst they may be small, they're certainly becoming big business, as Claire McGlasson found out. Is that nice? Is that nice? This little piggy won't be going to market. No, this little piggy is staying at home. This little piggy has a taste for luxury. This little piggy, room to roam. Because these little piggies are so wee wee wee, you can keep them at home. They can use a litter tray, and as long as they've got a big squashy cushion to lay on or a nice comfy sofa, they're really at home. And they're very loving, as you can see. These are micro pigs, created by crossing miniature pot bellied pigs with breeds like Tamworths and Gloucester Old Spots. They only grow to about 14 inches tall, and because they haven't got fur, they've become popular with people who have allergies to cats and dogs. This little one is only four days old, one of a litter of eight new piglets, and every one has already got a buyer waiting. The price? as much as £750 each. I had one at my mum's once who used to learn how to open the freezer. Came home one day and there was garlic bread all over the place. So. <laughs> it tastes like garlic bread. They love garlic bread, yeah. yeah. It stunk a bit afterwards, but no, they'll, they'll, sit, they'll sit there and they'll work out how to do things. They'll open cupboards to get crisps out, etc. So you have to pig-proof your home. So where does a pampered pet pig sleep? No styes for these guys. They're like little hot water bottles, yeah. Yeah, and they snuggle up to you and stuff. It's uh, better than having a boyfriend. <laughs> I think that's what's known as pigs in blankets. Claire McGlasson, Anglia News, Christchurch, near Wisbeach. That is the single well, lovely, cutest yes, thing I've seen. Lovely. I always wanted a pig, but I didn't have a garden. Is that it? Well, now you've got your big chance, haven't there you? There we go. All you Save need is a cushion. The I love the fact you can open the fridge, though. It's like Babe loose in Wisbeach. You're going to come home, aren't you? Find it sitting on the sofa, paper open, all that sort of stuff. Let's hope they don't go the other way and start doing macro ants and things like that. I suppose mm. the next stage, isn't it? It wouldn't be quite Maybe so I'll, cute. Maybe we'll just stick some fish or something. Well, uh, it's almost time for us to go, but uh, now a quick look ahead to what to expect on the national news in a couple of minutes. Here's Mary Nightingale. <laughs> Micro pigs to giant footprints, I don't know. Right, let's uh, catch up with what, what the weather has in store. It's a little bit soggy out there at the moment. Here's Rachel Mackley to tell us all.